welcome back to my channel so happy pride month hey <laughs> are you excited i'm excited last year i didn't make a pride doll not because i didn't want to um but because i just couldn't think of an idea so this year i made two of them um so happy pride july because obviously the second one is not going to be on time because it's the 30th when i'm posting this and yeah you're not getting two videos in one day but the second one should be up kind of shortly so be on the lookout for that i was asked to partake in a pride collab with some awesome youtube fellow doll creators the basis of the collab was that everyone got a specific color from the pride flag and we all had to make a monochromatic doll based on that color the participants in this collab were enchantarium hexion the dolly geek h alley crafts Doll Links, Cairo's Workshop, His Name is Akeen, Val Kitty's World, and Stitchwick Creations. I'm going to link everyone who's in this collab down in the description box and you guys should check them out. I think everyone's all turned out really awesome. Like, I really dig this collab. Um, I love them so much. Y'all can mail them to me if you want. Mail me all the dolls. <laughs> I'll give you my address. So what color did I get? Well... I got brown, which I'm not even going to lie, y'all. I did not even know that brown was part of the pride flag until literally this month. Did y'all know that? Am I the only one in this boat? Well, y'all are going to learn today. Brown was actually added in 2017, and I'm pretty sure I missed the memo on this because I was actually moving to Kuwait at the time. Um, I was going through some cultural shock, wasn't really paying attention to things. From my understanding, brown and black were added to the flag to acknowledge the immense contribution that POC made to LGBTQ rights. Also, did you know that all of the colors of the rainbow flag actually have a specific meaning to each of them? I feel like this is literally just me dropping like facts that everybody else knew about that I didn't get them about. I'm over here like, grass is green, y'all. Everybody like, yeah, we know. Um, but brown actually means inclusivity. The more you know. So what are we doing with this doll? All right, so I am not personally a LGBTQ person, but there are a lot of people who I love and care for that are. And one of the main people that I love and care for that is LGBTQ is my best friend since I was 12. They are actually non-binary. So I wanted to make a non-binary character sort of as an ode to them. Because this project is monochromatic, um, I am choosing to make a magical NB. So like a magical girl, but a non-binary magical girl so not girl nb you get what i'm saying okay by the way after this project i swear i won't make a magical person for a little bit i know it's maybe a little bit repetitive but i guess this one's a little bit different because it's not technically a magical girl anyway um so who are we using as a base so obviously i uh, wanted to use a poc base and i narrowed it down to claudine or nephra now as much as i wanted to use claudine for this project and i will use a claudine seriously soon <laughs> um Claudine has a very cute face mold. It's like adorable. And I just wanted something a little bit more fierce for this project. Um, Nefra's face mold is so strong and defined that I just thought it would suit this a little bit better. Also, Nefra is on a big sister body type, which I'm going for more of an androgynous look for this character. And I just thought that that body type would kind of lend itself a little bit better for this project. I know this is the longest intro ever, but let's finally get into prepping this doll. I start with the basics of cutting off their hair, heating up the vinyl of their head with hot water so that I can pop their head off, then popping their head off, then scraping around the inside of their head with a screwdriver and pulling all the glue gunk out with needle nose pliers. With 100% acetone, I wipe the face paint off. We're going to be rerouting this doll, so I paint the scalp with some brown acrylic paint. This makes it so that if there's any gaps in the reroute, uh, it's not as obvious. For hair, I'm using this beautiful acrylic yarn. Um, it just, it's just fantastic. Um, but I'm tying it around this bag handle. It's the bag handle, y'all. It's the bag handle. You may be like, why are you so passionate? It's a thing. Um, but I am brushing out the yarn from the bottom, working my way up with a cap brush. The way that this yarn brushes out, it brushes out in a really natural looking wavy way. So I think it's just stunning. I'm not gonna be straightening it with a hair straightener. To reroute the hair, I'm taking a tiny chunk of my yarn, wrapping it around my finger, and then wrapping it around the top of the reroute tool and plunging that into the head. Okay. 
Ugh. I just love this yarn so much. So pretty. To make sure that yarn stays in place, I take my Fabri-Tac glue, squeeze it in through the neck hole, and make sure it just like sits like that and dries for about an hour. I spray the doll three times Mr. Super Clear, waiting 15 minutes between each spray and wearing a respirator mask. This makes it so that the face has a paper-like finish when I start to do the face up, and then we get on into sketching out the face. I wanted to deepen up their complexion a little bit, so I'm taking a brown pastel and just covering the face with that. I didn't find it necessary to do more than one coat because MSC dries darker anyway. I start with the eyes and Nefra's eye mold is really nice um, and kind of like long and a little cat-like. I don't know, I dig it. So I'm sort of just following the eye mold fairly closely. To separate the upper and lower lip, I went in with a black pencil. This is because I'm going to be giving them a black lip color. For blush, I'm using a red and I'm putting that on the cheeks, the forehead, the nose, the chin, <laughs> just wherever, all over. For the whites of the eyes, I switched over to a Prismacolor pencil, and I think I told you guys that I was trying these out in a couple videos ago. Uh, just a little update. I love them a lot. I think the colors are really, 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 really nice, and I like how like creamy they are. Um, and I, I think it's kind of like mandatory to get the Prismacolor sharpener, but once you have it, they sharpen beautifully. I wanted to further define Nefra's already quite sculpted face, um, so I'm taking a darker brown and I'm just contouring their cheekbones and their forehead. I'm also adding shading around the eyes, the nose, and the lips. Y'all know I love adding blue to faces. I don't even care, honestly, if they're accurate for the skin tone at this point. I just love the way it looks. So I'm adding a sort of medium blue around the forehead and the eyes. I also love veins. So I add branch-like pencil marks around the eyes and the forehead. I really like freckles on really any skin tone, but specifically on tanner or deeper skin tone, so I'm splattering brown paint onto the face. With a small brush, I tap black pastel onto the lips. For the eye color, I'm creating a gradient of brown to gold. We were talking in the group chat saying how it's okay to use some sort of an accent color for these dolls since they are so like monochromatic to make something pop. So you guys will soon see that my accent color is gold. I think I used it a little bit more than some of the people in the club, sorry about that. I also snuck in some black too, which you may have noticed. <laughs> I start the beginning stages of highlights on the face with a light beige and I'm putting that around the eyes, 
the nose and the forehead. This may look intense now, but again, MSC darkens everything. I initially colored in the waterline with a peach pencil, but I added a highlight of light beige to the middle and the inner corner just to create a little bit of dimension and highlight in that area. I always go over the initial layer of pencil with pastels for the eye color just because I feel like it really deepens up the eye color and creates a nice gradient that I don't have to like sit there and work for with layer after layer of MSC. I sketch in the eyebrow shape with black pastel and I feel like with brows I either want them to be like super thick and intense and like beautifully wild or just no brows at all. Since there's a lot of shading around the eyes and just kind of the face as well, um, I wanted to bring back some of the light on the eyes with lines of highlights of white pencil. I like to go over the eyelid lines that I originally laid down with a dark purple pencil. I feel like it gives you a lot of really nice definition to the eyes, but also looks a little bit more special and not as stark as black. I wet my white watercolor and I'm going over the lines that I laid down with the watercolor pencil, but I'm not like fully outlining everything. I'm also adding white uh, watercolor to the eye whites just to make them really pop. I like giving my doll's irises a halo, so I'm taking a light yellow watercolor and I'm adding a ring around the iris. But on the right side, it's like that, it's just the yellow, but I added gold paint on top of the left side to make it so that it's like a halo that folds in, or folds, no, fades into a metallic halo. You know what I'm talking about? Fancy painting. Hello, brow hair. Okay, so I'm going over the eyebrows and I'm just really defining all those lines of hair on the eyebrows and make them real nice and nasty. I normally add lines of highlights to the lips with a white, but that would look not great. So I'm taking a gold and I'm putting that on top of the black and might I say it looks very nice. I just really like how it turned out. Typically I use the Macro Prolex pigment, which is like a silvery shade, but I thought that would look booty hole on this doll's skin tone. So I went in with a chunky gold all over the face and on the lips. To further define the eyebrows, I feel like this is really important when the eyebrows are a dark color because it just really makes the brow hair stand out, but I'm going over the brow hair with a black watercolor pencil, like a wet black watercolor pencil. I sketch in quick hard pencil marks with a really sharp black watercolor pencil for the lashes. A little tip if you didn't know this already, but pencils like Faber-Castell have a harder lead or whatever the heck's in it, so that gives you a cleaner line with the lashes. I found with pencils that are maybe a little bit creamier and darker, they have more of a feathered line to them. I tapped metallic red watercolor paint onto their pupils. By the way guys, if you're ever wondering what products I'm using, they're always listed in the description box as well as my favorite tiny paintbrushes. I really like adding dots of rose gold and white watercolor to the waterline. It just makes the waterline look nice and shiny, looks like they're about to cry. 
but in the best way possible. With rose gold pencil and gold metallic watercolor paint, I add little flicks on the lash line um, to extend the lashes and also just give them a nice like colored look. It just looks pretty, I don't know, try it. Since they are a magical NB, they need to have the stereotypical magical girl like thing on their forehead, like symbol. So I really like the non-binary symbol, like I just think it looks really cool. Um, so I added that to their forehead. On to gloss, so this is Vallejo Gloss Varnish. I put this on their lips as well as, and I completely regret this, I put it on the symbol on their forehead. It just makes it so it's really hard to photograph, which I knew, which is why I stopped putting on the eyeballs, but you know, shame on me, I guess. <laughs> Overall, I really dig how the face up came out. On to the body, so I sanded off the panties and on deeper like tanner skin tones, when you sand, them down they get real like ashy looking so to combat this I'm using matte varnish and I'm just putting that over where I sanded off the panties then I'm blushing the body with the same tones that I used on the face It always feels so good with repaints when you put the head back on the body. <laughs> I just like looking at them together again. On to the clothes. So the first thing that I'm going to be making is a vest. And I wanted this vest to have coattails um, because I like coattails <laughs> if you haven't noticed. But uh, the first step that I'm doing is I am hemming the vest and I did this with glue for the first time. Um, I've heard a lot of people talk about how great it is to hem with glue and I completely agree, it just looks really clean. Once everything was all hemmed, I sewed the two pieces of the vest together at the top, good side to good side. I then sewed it up the back seam where the coattails meet. I did something I normally never do. Um, I sewed darts into the side. Look at me moving on up in the sewing world. I wanted the coattails to be lined with gold fabric, so I cut two pieces of this gold metallic fabric and I glued them down onto each one of the coattails. I later went in and actually sewed them down with metallic gold thread, but I don't think I caught that on camera. Since pride is all about love, I wanted to sew one of these little nail art hearts onto the vest, and that's what I did. Off camera, I sewed some belt loops onto the vest because I wanted to make a little belt for it. I actually wanted to make a belt because Lady Dynamite Creations sent me a little package um, and it came with all these little tiny like doll doodads. One of the things is a tiny little belt buckle and I'm obsessed with it and I'm going to buy a bunch of these because she told me where she bought them and I'm going to buy all of it. Um, so I wanted to use this little belt buckle and this little gem thingy that I found in the pack that she sent me. So I'm going to be creating a belt with a strip of brown fabric. I'm sewing the belt buckle onto the top of the belt. On to pants, so I got this pattern from a Mistress Bloodgood doll, which I only have two big sister dolls left and it breaks my heart. I begin by hemming the top and the bottom of the pants. I 
I then sew the pants together at the crotch. I sewed each of the leg of the pants together. I then sewed it up the butt and I just have to say, okay, sometimes I make some wonky pants and these are just some nice pants. These are A plus pants. We all know I'm wonky at sewing. <laughs> To the shirt so I take this brown chiffon fabric and I am hemming each part of the shirt to so the bottom the neckline the sleeves all of it after that was all nice and hemmed I sewed the shirt together at the shoulders I wanted the sleeves to be nice and poofy, so I gather stitched the top and the bottom of them. I'm sewing the top part of the sleeve to the bottom part of the sleeve, good side to good side. Well, you look at that, it's just nice and poofy and then nice and skinny. To add a bit of a ruffle to the bottom part of the sleeve, I gather stitched a strip of gold fabric. Wow, look at them sleeves. I sewed them in place. I did this off camera. I feel like I lost some footage for this video. I just remember filming things that aren't there. Maybe I'm delusional, but um, I sewed up the side seam of the shirt. On to the collar. I love collars. <laughs> they just make things look so dramatic, but I took two strips of this brown chiffon fabric and I just gather stitched it. Then I took uh, one of the strips and I sewed it to the bottom part of this gold ribbon and then I took the other piece and I sewed it to the top part. I also sewed a clasp onto the back of the collar just so that it can connect. Now for decorations. So I hot glued that little like studded thing that I showed you guys when I was making the belt onto the collar and I'm going to be putting a chain on this later. I also decorated the vest with some buttons. This is probably completely unnecessary, but I was like, the diamond's on brown, so I painted the diamonds brown. On to the boots, and might I say, these are the best boots I ever made. That's not really saying much though, because like, I'm really bad at making shoes, but I just wrapped saran wrap around their leg, and then I wrapped tape around that. This is just to get the pattern for the boots. Once that was all cut and I cut the fabric, I took the fabric that I cut, I wrapped it around the leg, and I sewed it together up the leg, good side to good side. After I flipped it and I put it on the leg, I realized that the pants underneath were just like real lumpy looking, and I had to cut my nice pants. So I just cut them shorter and made them more into like long shorts so that they would look more flattering underneath the boots. For the soles, I traced around the foot and I cut it out of Warbler. I initially cut this little piece for like a heel, but ended up not using that because I'm going to make the heel completely different. But I heated up the Warbler and formed it around their foot. For the heel, I ended up using a pin and I feel like I saw somebody do this method and that's why I know about this method, but I just genuinely can't remember who. <laughs> So if this is your method for shoes, kudos to you. Sorry, I can't remember. Uh, but I'm taking epoxy sculpt and I am forming that around the toe of the boot and also around the needle that I put on for a heel. After that was all nice and dry, I sanded it down. Time for paint. So I paint the shoes, the heel, the sole, and the front of the shoe with brown acrylic paint. 
There was a tiny gap between the fabric and the sole, so I took some embroidery thread and craft glue and I just glued that around the gap. I wanted the top of the boot to have a strip of gold, so I took my Arteza fabric paint and I just painted a strip of gold up there. Last but not least for these boots, I painted the um, brown part that I painted with brown acrylic paint with metallic brown watercolor. I have a bead store around the block for me and they were selling whatever these things are. I don't know what they are, um, but I wanted to create a gradient on top of them with brown pastel. So I wrapped some artist tape around them and I took my brown pastel and I just tapped that on top. I also put a little bit of black pastel on the tippity top of them um, and I sprayed them with MSC. I love them so much. I'm gonna be hot gluing those in place. So I take them, I take a little bit of hot glue, I place them on the head, and to make it so that they blend a little bit better, I'm wrapping some hair around them. It's time for the big chops. So I cut quite a bit of the hair off. I rarely ever do short hair dolls, um, and I just figured, hey, let's do it. So I cut it off, and then I took an X-Acto blade, and I just kind of like drug that down the hair so that it was more feathered and not as harsh of a line as the scissors created. So they need a magical NB weapon, and this doll is lightly inspired by revolutionary girl Utna. Um, I don't know if anybody ever watched that movie. <laughs> I watched that movie when I was like 11. It's a little too much for an 11 year old, but anyway, I just wanted them to have a sword kind of inspired by that character. So I took a barbecue skewer, I cut the top off, I whittled it down with my X-Acto blade and then I took some Fimo clay and I formed a circle and I baked it. The circle is for the handle because I'm modeling the handle of the sword off of the non-binary sign because again I like how it looks. So I figured let's give a little non-binary sign handle. For the rest of the handle I'm going to be using wood and epoxy sculpt. I super glued the handle and the blade of the sword together and then I went over that with epoxy glue just to make sure that it was like nice and strong and solid. With my hand drill, I drilled a tiny little hole into the circle part of the handle because I'm going to be decorating it in a minute. But this is jewelry wire. I'm wrapping that around the handle first. I just really like how jewelry wire looks. It just adds like a detail to whatever you're making, specifically weapons. Um, that's just real easy. This is a gold heart earring. I cut down the needle part of it a little bit and I stuck that into the hole that I drilled with my hand drill. I glued my tiny little nail art hearts to the sides of the X. Now for painting. So I did a coat of brown paint just all over the sword and then I went in with my metallic watercolor. So first I went in with the metallic brown watercolor and I put that all over the handle and then I went in with the metallic gold watercolor and I put that all over the blade of the sword. The last step that I did was I did a wash of black paint just around the handle of the sword and here they are! Oh my gosh! Okay, so I really like how this doll turned out, but I am not gonna lie, it's a little steampunk piratey magical envy person. Um, that was completely non-intentional. Um, I am 90% certain it's mainly the color scheme that did that, 
because if you like translate this doll into purple or something, I feel like it would just translate better as a magical NB character. So maybe they're just like a magical NB steampunk pirate, you know? Let them live their life, whatever. I took a couple photos of this doll with the doll that I made a couple months ago that was a magical girl, and I think they look pretty cute together. It's always interesting comparing dolls that you create months ago with the current doll that you're working on because I feel like, at least, for me, like I can see like the progress, um, and it's interesting because I didn't think that there was much progress until I kind of compare and contrast them now. Anyway guys, I hope that you like how they turned out, and definitely check out my collab partners' dolls because I think they turned out awesome. Um, I want to thank them for letting me participate in this collab, it was just a really fun experience and it's always fun to work with fellow youtube doll artists so if you guys like this video like this video subscribe it makes me happy have a good pride even though i know it's like the last day of pride month but you know what we're doing pride july over here so hey <laughs> all right guys have a beautiful day bye